أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم في سورة المائدة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا الآية أما بعد وثم أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that he عز وجل deserves to be praised We give thanks to he subhanahu wa ta'ala for his many favors and for allowing us to each and every day live our life as a Muslim and allow us to live our life every day, period. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that He does for us on a daily basis. After this we testify and we affirm our faith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the last and final messenger sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a mercy and as a guide and as a living example for us. Before we get into the topic of today's khutbah, I want to remind myself and you about an ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that today I have perfected for you your religion and that I have completed my favor upon you and that I have chosen and I am happy with Islam as being your only way of life. And this is the ayah that we recited in the beginning. From this ayah we can understand and we must understand that the only way of life, the only true way of life has already been set, has already been decreed. There is no changing it. There is no additions to the religion. There is no, I think this is, uh, you know, this is good, we can, we can do this. If it was not stipulated in the Qur'an or in the Hadith, then it is not from the religion. And if we do take something that is outside of the Qur'an and the Hadith, then we are saying that the Prophet wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgot something. Billah. We are saying that this deen is incomplete when the ayah says clearly that the deen is complete and that we should follow it as it is. Furthermore, we follow it in its, entire, in its entirety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Udkhulu fi silmi kafa. Enter into Islam completely and wholeheartedly. Not, we put a part of us in and you know, we'll stay away from the rest of it. Once we declare ourselves as Muslim, we enter into Islam entirely. And this brings us to the topic of the khutbah today. Bithnillahi ta'ala. We want to discuss some of the characteristics of a group of people. A group of people that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he speaks about in many ahadith. He speaks in detail about these type of people. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he calls them the kilabun nar 
the dogs of Jahannam. And so the purpose of us learning and discussing these characteristics of these people who the Prophet ﷺ warned us about is so that we don't fall into that category. And so if we have any of these characteristics in our lives or in ourselves, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to rectify, to rectify ourselves and our characteristics. And that He not allow us to be like the people of the, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described as being the kilabun nar or the dogs of Jahannam. So who are these people that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talk, is talking about and is warning us about? These people are a deviant group and the only deviant group that the Prophet ﷺ mentions by name. They deviate in the way that they practice their Islam. They are Muslim, but they deviate in the Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told us that these people are the Khawarij. And he says in the hadith, Al Khawariju Kilabun Nar, that they are the dogs of Jahannam. The Khawarij are the dogs of Jahannam. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentions to us, in a few ahadith that we will cover some of the characteristics. The first of which is that they will be young in age. They will be young in age. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, at the end of time, there will appear some people from, from amongst you who are young in age. They are immature and they are senseless. They will use the best of speech. They will have very articulate speech and people will believe their claims. And these are the people that the Prophet ﷺ is warning us about, the Khawarij. They come and they are from amongst the younger people. If we look in our time, we see that a lot of the time, the young people are the ones who will jump up and say this and that about the religion, that they know something that no one else in 1400 years of Islam has known. They're the ones that will jump up and say this and that about the religion. Also, they are the ones that are the most easily swayed. Whatever they hear, they're like a sponge and they soak it up. So when the time comes, these same young people who, has heard, who have heard all of these things about the religion, they put it into practice. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ is warning us about. Another characteristic is that they quote the Qur'an and they quote the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. They quote the hadith and they use it to suit their own purposes. They take certain things that they like and certain things that they want and they tailor it to fit their own agenda. And if you find yourself or we find ourselves reciting the Qur'an, and sometimes you will know, you, you'll know it within yourself. You recite the Qur'an and you try to convince yourself that this ayah is not for you. Or this thing that you're doing, you know, it's an exception. But this is not right. This is a characteristic that the Prophet ﷺ is attributing to these people who will be in the Jahannam. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum, he said that the Khawarij, they took verses from the Qur'an that spoke about the disbelievers and they attributed it to the believers. Meaning that they took ayahs about killing the disbelievers and they attributed it to the believers. So they went and they killed the believers. billah. A third characteristic is that they have very limited to no understanding of the religion. They have very limited understanding of the deen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, قَوْمٌ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنَ لَا يُجَاوِزُ تَرَاقِيَهُمْ That they recite the Qur'an. These people, they recite the Qur'an, but it doesn't go past their throats. Or in another hadith, it doesn't go past their collarbones. Meaning, that they recite the Qur'an, they recite the words, they have beautiful tajweed, some of them. Better than us maybe. But they recite the Qur'an and the meaning does not penetrate their heart. 
the meaning of the Quran, what Allah is saying, doesn't make any difference in their life. It is not manifested in their life. And these are the people that the Prophet ﷺ is warning us not to be like. And these people recite the Quran. Imagine those people who are Muslims who don't even recite the Quran. We have one in our house, that's all we know about it. It's there, it's on the shelf. These people, they recite the Quran and they recite it beautifully, some of them, but they are the dogs of Jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to not be from amongst these people. Another characteristic of these people is that they are extravagant in their practice of the deen. They are extravagant in their practice of the deen. There was a narration in Bukhari, a very long narration, wherein some of the companions, they are relaying something that happened to them. They said that they went to an area in which the khawarij were known to be in. They settled there. And they told the Prophet ﷺ that these people, their feet were calloused from praying long hours. They had signs of lengthy salah on them, on their bodies, physically. And their recitation of the Qur'an resembled the humming or the buzzing of bees. You know when a, a group of bees are together and they make that buzzing sound, it's a very, it's a very uh, a disaturnable sound. You understand it. And they said that this is the way that they recited the Qur'an. That they were so engrossed in their recitation, all of them together reciting the Qur'an, that this was the sound that, was, that they were making. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in another hadith, telling the companions that if you were to see the khawarij, if you were to see these deviant individuals of Islam, that you, the Sahaba, will belittle your own actions as compared to them. Meaning that you would look at yourself, the Sahaba, they would look at themselves, and then look at the people, the khawarij, and they will think, that their salah, the salah of the sahabas, they, it has no meaning. Because of the extravagance of which these people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in today, this day and age, this characteristic is kind of hard to find. Because people, they, they tend to run away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who do worship, and those who are extravagant in their worship, what they do is, they brag and they boast about the worship of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They make sure that every single person knows what they're doing and how much of it they're doing. Another characteristic of these people is that they, they kill the believers and they spare the disbelievers. And it's something that we mentioned before in the hadith of Ibn Umar, where they take the ayahs of the Qur'an that were revealed in regards to the, to the disbelievers and they attribute it to the believers. Such are these people that they went around and they killed the believers because they felt and they believed wholeheartedly that the Qur'an was for them. The Qur'an was supporting them when in reality the Qur'an was against them. The Qur'an was against them but they in their, in their corrupt state of mind, they believed that the Qur'an was for them. They go extreme in their religion. They are extreme in their religion. And we spoke about this briefly in one of the other characteristics that we mentioned that they are extravagant. This is slightly different. There's one narration where the Prophet ﷺ, he was distributing the spoils of war and the companions there around him and a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said Ya Muhammad, ittaqullah 
O Muhammad, fear Allah. And in another hadith, it says, Ya Rasulullah, be just. Be just. So in the narration that, that says, Ya Muhammad, ittaqillah, no one came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and would address him in that manner, by his first name. And this man came and he told Rasulullah, fear Allah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told the man, if I was not to fear Allah, or if I was not to be just, as mentioned in another hadith, if I was not to fear Allah or to be just, then who would be just or who would fear Allah? And the companions that were around them, that were around he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, Ya Rasulullah, let, let us take care of this guy. Let, let's take care of it right now. And Rasulullah, he stopped them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the companions that from this man, his progeny will be these deviants that we have been talking about. These khawarij. From this man, his lineage will be the khawarij and will be the deviants of the religion. In the time of the Khalifa Uthman and in the time of the Khalifa Ali, these people, they were very popular in the, in the terms that they were easy to find. Yani these were the people that were swaying the Muslims one way or another. They corrupted the Muslims by their speech. And it's something that we spoke about, that they corrupt with their speech, their eloquence in speech. And in the time of Ali radiallahu an, they questioned the Khalifa. They questioned him over some of the decisions that he had made. And it, were, it was three decisions in, in particular, but for time we're not going to go into the, the specifics of the three decisions. But the decisions, if we look at them, they were backed by the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and Qur'an. So there was really no dispute over what Ali had done. But these people, they were so ignorant and they were so, they were ignorant in the fact that they would not listen to the Khalifa. They went around trying to corrupt people over the fact that the Khalifa had made a mistake. They felt that the Khalifa had made a mistake and that he was wrong in what he did when the Hadith and the Quran were in support of him. Another characteristic of these people is that they do not hold the scholars or the learned individuals to a high regard. They do not hold the scholars or the learned individuals to a high regard. They say about them that they don't know anything or that their ideology is not right. When the Khawarij, they come upon the scholars, the true scholars of the religion, they think about them, these people, they don't, they don't conform to my ideas, they don't, they're not in line with my ideas, so we're not going to follow them. And these were the early scholars of the Muslims. And even some of the more contemporary scholars, scholars that were in our time or just a little bit before our time, true scholars of the religion, these people, they spoke out against them. They spoke out against them. And another characteristic, and actually the final characteristic that we're going to mention, is that these people, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, they are from the signs of the Day of Judgment. They are from the signs of the Day of Judgment. One of the lengthy hadith that talk about these people, the Khawarij, it starts, يَأْتِي فِي آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ that in the end of times. And one of the hadith that I would just like to share with you before we close is that of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And this hadith summarizes everything that we've talked about. And the hadith goes, at the end of time there will emerge a people who will be young in age and foolish. They will recite the Qur'an but it will go no further than their collarbones. 
They will quote the words of the best of mankind, but they will pass out of Islam as the arrow passes out of its prey. What this last part means is that when you hunt an animal and you shoot the arrow into the animal, as quickly as the, animal, the arrow enters into the animal and exits the animal, such will they enter and exit out of the religion. They will have no, their faith in Islam will not be staunch at all. They will not have firm, and convic, firm belief and conviction in, Islam, in this religion, in, in this religion of Islam. The last thing that I would like to share about you, with you about these people is something that the Prophet وسلم, he mentions wherein he says بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبًا Prophet وسلم, says in a beautiful hadith that at the end of times rather not in the end of times but Islam began in its early days as something that was strange and Islam will return to being something strange. فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى So give glad tidings to the strangers. What this hadith means is that in the beginning there were few Muslims. Islam was new. Those people, they were regarded as being strange. They were regarded as being weird. These early Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Islam will return to being something like that. The true Islam, the Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran, and the Islam that the Prophet ﷺ lived, in the end of times it will return to being something strange. So the Prophet ﷺ says, give glad tidings, fatuba lil ghuraba, give glad tidings to the strangers. These people who in the end of times and in the beginning of time when Islam was new, they were regarded as the strangers. They were the ones that practiced Islam properly and, and the way that it was meant to be practiced. These people give the glad tidings to them that they have done something that was right and done something that was good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those people who practice Islam as it was revealed and meant to be practiced. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not make us from amongst those people who will be in the Jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us entrance into Jannah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all our sins, those that we have knowingly committed and those that we have unknowingly committed. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله وحده وصلوات الله وسلامه على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمة أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقهم حياء عثمان وأخذهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدنا الشباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة <تصفيق> مغفرة ظاهرة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغدهم فببغض أبغدهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله أذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأكبر وقوموا إلى صلاتكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر